Experience the future of storage with the Intel SSD 750 series, delivering uncompromised performance with NVM Express and PCIe 3.0. Click now to learn how you can win one free from Intel and PC Perspective. Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 349, being recorded on May 13th, 2015. I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Hallath. And I'm Alan Malentano. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the exciting plans we have in store for episode 350 next week. Yeah. We always celebrate the milestones on the show. You know, we never forget about them no. and just roll through it anyway. So episode 350 will be next week. But you guys are lucky enough to be part of episode 349 for whatever that's worth, I guess. Uh, congratulations to you there. Um, oh, I did forget to bring up one of our pages here. Ken, let me do that real fast. And uh, we will see. We do record the show Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. No, wait, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Yep. Uh, and if you get if you come watch the live show, you get more interesting stuff. Like we just had a 10 minute discussion about Star Wars and what your first Star Wars movie was, and in reference to my T-shirt and all the other stuff. So mm -hmm. you missed out on that if you didn't watch the live stream. If you want to watch the live stream, come to pcper.com/live at the time I just told you. If you need a friendly reminder, we can do that for you. It's not difficult. Go to pcper.com slash subscribe. You get this uh, little web page here. And all it does is ask you for your name and your email address, and you're signed up for our PC Perspective Live mailing list. We send you an email, usually about an hour, hour and a half before we do any kind of live streaming event, uh, or for scheduling a special event, we'll maybe email you a few days ahead of time. So if you want to put it on your calendar, you have that capability to do so as well. Uh, like I said, pcpro.com slash subscribe. It's super easy. We don't use it for anything else. That's all we use it for. Um, and uh, welcome to the group if you're new to that list. We've had several hundred people sign up in the last uh, week or so. Sweet. So welcome to the show. Sorry about Josh. Yeah. We'll just apologize in advance. Just Yeah, we'll just get that out of the way. Yeah, my mom's even sorry about me. She apologizes profusely <laughs> it happens it happens yeah uh so first things first we got a couple of contests still running i think we mentioned these last week but another reminder for you uh we have first up a you can win a 400 gig intel 750 a 400 gig intel 750 series 750. yes uh, probably 750 series is not the best name the intel 750 series ssd this is the pci express nvme drive uh that we have here you can win the 400 gig variant in the pcie add-in card variation thereof um, all you have to do is go to our website and find this page, or if you can go to pcport.com slash podcast, then the uh, link will be in those show notes. Fill out a handful of form or entry methods here. You can do one or all of these. You can or keep coming back. read the review, uh, answer a question, follow us on Twitter. And then there is a daily entry. If you come back to this post every day, you can enter once per day yeah. up your chances there. So that's you got a chance sweet. to win that. Yeah, I, I do like this new system. I think that's working out well. So that's one contest we have uh, courtesy of our friends. Hey, but what if I already do so, most of those things? You can't win. It doesn't really matter. You can do all of them you want, Josh. Yeah. Sorry. You also can't win, Josh, <laughs> a GeForce GTX 980 Gold Edition from Asus, who is celebrating their 20th anniversary of making discrete graphics cards. Are we allowed well, to what show if they it? send me their wide edition? Uh, yeah, I mean, looks like you already have it, like all up in here. I am the white edition. You are the white edition. Uh, this gold edition is impressive. If you haven't seen it in person, there's some pictures on this post, and also we did a video of it as well. The whole backplate is gold. Mm -hmm. Not real gold, but like gold colored, I guess I should gold say. Gold anodized. Um, it's built on the same design as the Matrix Platinum card. So super overclockable, super like 14 face power, mm -hmm. um, zero dB cooler, a great cooler in there. It it's actually got a jumper runs, you if you're. If you want to do LN2, you know, you can like uh, unlock the BIOS, that type of stuff. Yeah, it also runs just out of the box at about 100 megahertz higher than the Matrix Platinum. So this is even more bend than the Matrix Platinum cards, which is pretty impressive. Um, guaranteed to be faster than the S3 Verge. Yeah. Guaranteed that the, yes, the card they came out with in '96. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see some drivers for that. By the way, <laughs> Windows 8.1, maybe Windows 10 compatibility. <laughs> uh, so if you want to enter for that, again, you can just go to the website. 
find the post there or go to pcper.com slash podcast and find the link there. Also, same ways of entry, you know, like us on Facebook because you want to impress Josh, Twitter, uh, daily bonus entries, all that is available there. And even better, they're only making 200 of those for North America. Mm -hmm. So uh, not only is it a really nice card, but it's fairly limited. So uh, thanks to Asus for that contest. That one only has like two days left. So if you're listening to this, you need to go enter right away if you haven't. The Intel one, I think you've got a couple of weeks more still. So uh, let's move on to some uh, stuff that happened over the last week. It's been about a week since we did a podcast, I think. I think so. Round about. Roughly a week. We'll run through a couple of these. Uh, for example, Maury posted a review of the super uh, a super micro motherboard. No. They make things? Super micro? Super micro is making consumer products. For the enthusiast? How many sockets does it have? How many sockets does it have? <laughs> One. How many, how many dozen dim slots does it have? <laughs> hmm. right? We know of Super Micro uh, from like kind of the OEM server market, right? Yeah. They make yeah. dual processor boards, quad processor boards, server Eight bare processor bones, boards. You know, all kinds of crazy yeah. stuff. Uh, recently, they decided to get into the enthusiast market in a couple different areas both in motherboards and cases, which mm -hmm. we'll have a, an article up relatively soon from Sebastian as well. Um, this is the Supermicro C7X99OCE, which, as the name implies, is an X99 motherboard. And if you look at this, I will say that it looks fine, but it looks like like this we're really early in this whole idea of making an enthusiast motherboard. Um, it looks like a server group. Try to design an enthusiast motherboard. It Correct. looks it looks kind of like uh, kind of like an Intel reference motherboard. It, but I would say it looks like it, an Intel reference motherboard. There's more swagger, that's older. unfortunately, yeah. in yeah. an Intel reference board anymore. Yeah. It looks like well. the Asus like P7 series boards. Yeah, right. that's true. Uh, there's yeah, a couple. There's several buttons. generations behind. It does have green buttons on the bottom. That mm. is important. Uh, I won't argue with you there. But I mean, here's a, here's a picture that Mori took, uh, and what what stands out. Oh, to look me, at that battery placement. The battery placement is fantastic. Well, not no, if you have a big not, cooler. Not, not if you have a big uh, heat sink heat like Mori does. Yeah. What, what stands out to me is kind of the the mat. Like, you don't see any of the PCB, right? Like, you see just little bits and odds and ends soldered onto this all over. Like, the PCB is black, like right here. You can't tell. And, you like, you don't see any of that over it's here. It's a surface mount. Smorgasbord? Or G. I liked my term better. The, I think you're right. But I... <laughs> um, but look at those pins for the like, uh, scroll up. Yep. Look at the the empty ball grid array for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. What the audio hell controller would go maybe? There? I don't know. That's Heavy big for an audio networking? controller. Well, there's a picture that we have with the the chip is there. Oh yeah. L look how as the, media. That was an as media. It's an as media. So yeah. that would have been a, a different. Look model. at the dim slots. I, I the, think the two groups. They're not. They're not on the same level. I think right. uh, uneven. Here. I think the big thing that makes it look so busy is that they stenciled all of the components and all of oh, like is that the, the LED display? Uh, right. So they stenciled everything uh, is labeled on this PCB. Uh, again, yeah. going back to their server hair, yeah. everybody yeah. wanting everything to be labeled all the time. Because I mean, if you look at the back, like this is the back of the motherboard. Clearly, you can see how the PCB is colored. As yeah. opposed to yeah. what it looks like That's on why. this side, but well, uh, you know, at least that way I can, I can, I know what I'm, I'm abusing my soldering iron on. That's true, at right? At that point, if you need practice, there you go. Uh, it's like, hey, look at you, A2 <laughs> capacitor. Yeah, you're going down. <laughs> the back panel is fairly bare. You get six USB 3.0, two networking, audio, and a PS2. Right. I mean, it's an X99, so you're not going to get video output. So, you know, sure. if, if they don't have extra controllers on there for storage or USB, then that's what you get. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, here's a look at, you know, you've it, it's got four full length PCI Express cards, although it only I think it only it only run SLI three way or Crossfire three way. Yeah, because the fourth oh, no, one is four way. Uh, will it? I guess you have, you know, yeah. if it does, 16, you have to have a single eight, slot eight. single slot graphics card here to yeah. do that, though. Well, you know, it's not yeah. going to be easy to fit. But look, jumpers. It's not impossible. Jumpers Ooh. underneath these green buttons that what, Jeremy already pointed out. What are those for? What's, they what's turn it into a plane or a motorcycle. <laughs> I think or there's a better a picture. Down. Here we go. We can make a brooch or a pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, these are uh, manual overclocking modes. Um, OC front panel. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Jumpers, headers, all huh. kinds of weird stuff. The going first on time here. you've seen OC on a super micro board. That's Probably. true. It's true. true. Yeah. They're probably like, what is this OC thing? You know, and the thing is, is um, 
I'm not going to walk through every page because there's plenty. Of, there's 10 SATA ports on it, so they do have mm -hmm. that. Again, going back to their server heritage a little bit there. The one complaint Mori had here uh, is the DIMM slots are closer to the CPU socket than on other X99 motherboards. See the proximity between the, mm. yeah. the DIMM slots, and that's They're actually really the case. Right on top it's of the it. case on both sides. And when I show you the giant picture... Yeah, look at that. Everything is labeled. That's yep. awesome. You want to see resistor 1216? Boom, we got you. That that is really cool. How about what's a C what's what do you think C stands for? Capacitor. Capacitor. Oh yeah. Uh, we got resistors capac anything else? Anything else come up in here? L. Which would be inductors. L for inductor? Yes. I is a difficult character. I is difficult. To tell. It could be just one. Yeah. Uh so Look, there's tons of pictures in here. Uh, let's yeah, look yeah. at the CPU cooler and fit because that's obviously important <laughs> for Mori's reviews. Um, okay, it looks fine there, but yeah. you can see how, like, it's almost like those like coolers you, were designed to yeah, clear the RAM. You always wonder so. why. Why does that cooler have that right angle there? You're like, oh, that's why. Oh. And notice he didn't. He doesn't have dims in the or closer to slots either, right? Mm, you're right. You're right. He, he doesn't need, have, and it doesn't look like he can. Eh, nope. It would be. Probably not. You would need low profile dims. Yeah, you yeah. would these are probably some of the taller dims you can get. These are those uh thousand dollar that's a thousand dollar memory Oh, oh he just had to show off. Used. Yeah, well I of see. course. Of course. Uh but well, I mean it all know, fits in there. It, it is still doable. Again, yeah. for a for a first attempt, I think it I think it did pretty well. Uh Maury runs through his benchmarks, he runs through the overclocking. Uh, you know, you get things like this. Like that's about as generic and plain as an SLI connector can get. Uh huh. Uh that's what you get with a super micro board in their first generation. Like those are your SATA cables. Well, it's nice that they included them, They're and they there. look like the flexible ones, aren't They're they? There, I don't. They like the fairly like the thin ones or something. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Um, nice touch. So, I, I actually think it's it's a pretty interesting product for what it is. Uh, in terms of, it is late in the X99 game, to be fair. So they're kind of just, they're probably just using this as, let's see what feedback we get from consumers yeah. and yeah. and reviewers. They're just dipping their toe in the water. Well, for sure, but. Wouldn't Broadwell E be the next consumer or enthusiast platform? I don't know theory? the answer to that. I think I do, but I don't know if I know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're asking me if X99 will, will be part of that yeah. as well. I, it's possible. I don't. I don't know actually. Uh, it is a three hundred dollar motherboard or so. That's hmm. that's steep, uh, but for an X99 board, it's not really expensive. So. Uh, Worth noting, it did have. Let's see, if we look at the the strengths, you know, basic stock performance, overclocking performance was pretty good after dial in. Uh, lots of detail in the motherboard manual, important for some people, first yeah. time builders. CMOS battery placement it got a positive, Josh. It got a positive. even with that heatsink. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Dual Intel Gigi Nix. Well, that's that's nice. also a positive. That's a plus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, weaknesses, you know, complexities. Apparently, the overclocking was more difficult to tune in. Mm -hmm. uh, muted microphone recording performance. Lack of SATA port options. No M.2 or anything like that on there. Which you know you can understand that. Board aesthetics. Not the sexiest looking motherboard we've ever yeah, seen. Unless either. you want labels. Number of jumpers included for board configuration. <laughs> oh, they didn't include enough. No, I think it just means like number of jumpers that are oh, on. Oh, just there. the fact that there yeah. are a bunch. Yeah, and then the proximity of inside memory slots to CPU sockets. So, not a perfect motherboard, but I think a good option from uh, for su from Super Micro. And we'll we'll see what Sebastian has to say about their chassis. Maybe next week, maybe the week after that. All right, as well. Uh, another one. Again, I don't know how much more to talk about this because Scott is not on the show with us, but he wrote an interesting editorial about the death of Media Center, and uh, so disappointing. Yeah, so Microsoft basically announced that Windows 10 will not have a Media Center edition or a Media Center add-on. Yep. You won't be able to buy it. It always seemed tacked on at the end on Windows 8 as well. Like, oh, yeah, we forgot somebody wants to use this, mm -hmm. so we'll sell so it. So give us 10 bucks and you can get it. Uh, yeah, we actually want to prove that you're going to use it, so we're going to make it not free. And um, there were people that were getting it to install on mm -hmm. Windows 10 builds. They were doing oh, that. Really? Yeah. yeah. But you were stuck at the build level that you were and when you installed it. Right? <laughs> After they, whatever it was, when it, they decided it, they yeah. were done. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I don't know. It's like, it could work. They could have done it. They just decided, no, just it's time. Just don't do it anymore. The, the editorial Scott wrote kind of goes into, you know, the history of what Media Center was, web TV to Xbox, right? And and, and how it's a really good DVR. just changed directions on it. But I, that is a really good DVR, yep. you the, know? The problem was it was never in enough people's hands to prove that point. That's true. Because right. you needed, like, a cable card tuner and stuff like that or, you know, like, whatever file else. sizes were ridiculous, so you usually had to compress them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's actually, but, like... 
There's like a like an underground of apps that have been made by people oh, yeah. that'll take and like recompress the. <laughs> I've been running into those this week. Yeah, they'll it'll take the video <laughs> after Media Center has recorded it, recompress it. In some cases, uh, <clears throat> remove the commercials um, mm, yeah, right. and uh, you know and do that and just kind of like put it right back where it was and then you can still play it back even with Media Center just you know in a uh, much smaller form. And stuff like that. So kind of cool things, but, you know, it's there's all... A, I mean, there's all kinds of cool things. Scott points out in here that the games for Windows Live... I didn't know that these things were connected. Yeah. Games for Windows Live, <clears throat> in order to have that branding for Microsoft, you actually had to uh, support being launched by Media Center. Mm-hmm. Okay. The game had to be compatible with Xbox 360 peripherals. Yep. Makes sense. Yep. And it had to support the tray and play feature, which allowed a game to be launched without waiting for installation to complete. Right, and that's like something so far ahead. I know, like that's something yeah. that they're just now uh, not quite figuring out on Xbox One and PlayStation Four. Yeah, and and that that was a requirement to get that Xbox or uh, uh, Games for Windows Live certification. I had no idea that was the case. Mm-hmm. Right, so why didn't I ever buy Halo Two for Vista? Because <laughs> you were an intelligent <laughs> human being. I don't know. Uh, it. it I don't know. I, I don't like, know. I like that screenshot there. I just kind of wonder what's going to happen to the people that are using Media Center. Because even though it is a small percentage, it's still, like, if you just think about it in terms of a number, I would imagine it's a decent number. They just won't move on from Windows 8 on that box. Yeah, they're just going to, well, you can get 8 or with Windows Media XP, Center. probably but still for those just, Yeah, I said you know, Windows 8. Yeah, you'll just, you just have to stick with 8.1 and just that's it. You'll just end there until some, you know, buddy makes something else that can do cable card recording. And You know, there will be a Cody. Equivalent, maybe someday. Spelled with well, a K. The problem the, is the tuner and the cable card. The problem is cable card. The problem yeah. is cable card and DRM. That's why. The solution is that nobody will have cable, and you will all have Hulu, Netflix, well, that's true. on-demand style services. And then you won't even matter. Need, you won't even right? need, you need software anymore. that implements like Sling TV support. Like, yeah. oh hey, like my Kindle Fire TV does that, and boom, you know, if that's where that's all your true. TV is coming from, you're not going to need a DVR. In yeah. the same way, and you're not going to need a channel guide in the same way mm-hmm. it, as these things it just, proliferate. It would have been so cool if they ported the Xbox, all the development they put into TV on the Xbox, back to Windows 10. That's true. Right. It would have been cool. Yeah. You know oh, what else would have been cool? What? New coolers. Huh? New coolers. From Corsair, Coolsair. Who reviewed them? Do I own that domain yet? Did, did Moira review yeah. these? Who, who reviewed cool these? Coolsair. Cool. Oh, uh, Sebastian with the. Oh, there's going to be awesome pictures in this. I know. Oh, look at that bokeh. Oh, I thought you meant like of awesome. ice cube sitting on processors. No, 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 no. It's, no, it's, actual pictures. He's actual liquid cooling, not ice so, cooling. Sebastian posted a review of the uh, Corsair Hydro Series H100i GTX and H80i GT liquid CPU coolers. Yeah, yeah. Um, which you can see here resting in front of a copy of Tiger Woods 99. Uh, that looks like X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. That's awesome. Uh, I can see the LucasArts logos, but I can't really tell. Monkey what Island, I think, are. is one of them. Oh, man. Hey, Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate's in Warcraft. there. Warcraft. Yeah, but I think that or Starcraft, Starcraft, Battle Chest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. CPU coolers, um, Battle Chess. So these are basically kind of evolutions of the G, the the CPU cooler line that Corsair's had forever that they have have a strong dominance in in the market in terms of market yeah. share for sure. Yeah, they're good coolers. Uh, also, but they, they don't, don't change do, much. You don't have to do plumbing. You don't have to do plumbing. Just you just take it out of the box. Just hook it up. The thing is, yeah. is they just don't change much. Um, the H one hundred I GTX. I mean, look at that socket support. AM two. AM3. You know, physics. Okay, physics I'll can stop. only be bent so far. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, I think that we're kind of reaching. Necessity is the mother of invention. I can use catchphrases too. <laughs> But the fascinating part of hiring prostitutes on the 32nd of May. Wow. That's your catchphrase? I don't know. I'm just sure. stopping him. Okay. We'll stop. <laughs> um, so this will basically support any – these will both support basically any processors that are out there. The H100 is the uh, – is this 240 yeah. length one, and then you've got your 120. You kind of need a case H80. that has a spot for a 240 cooler like that. You don't just, kind of. You, you, <laughs> you know. do. No, you can just hang it you outside. Could just, you could just <laughs> lay it inside the case or just like... Hey, twist ties. <laughs> That's right. Twist ties and gaff tape fix everything. Yeah. Um, this is this is a, a picture of... I think we saw these at CES for the first time. I do like what they've done with the like styling, right? The 
the cool the the radiator just isn't plain black anymore. They added like a little stripe across it of silver yeah. with uh, the Corsair logo on there. You can also see that the H one hundred is a single thickness red, and the H eighty is a dual thickness. So even though it's one twenty instead of two forty, it's twice as thick huh. on it as well. So um, and you can see the fancy uh, fans there. So let's take a look at what performance results Sebastian got for us. Um, why is stop blinking at me? Go away. Uh, here we are. This is at stock speeds, Core i7 4790K, and this is delta temperature. By the way, we're not talking about 22 degrees Celsius actually. Yeah. Right. Uh, H100i GTX in performance mode, best cooler out there. But the H105 second best, mm. and then the H80 GT, and then the H100 in its default state, and then on and on in that way. So it looks like the 80, even though it's probably the same kind of surface area in the cooler. There's only one fan. There might right? be two fans, one on either side. Of the H80? Two fans. Yeah, it might be sandwiched. Hmm. But I think it only comes with one. I... Right? Because look, in his pictures, two. the 80... Oh, yeah, it is two. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So, Surprising. The H80 in its performance mode is actually two degrees Celsius higher than the H100, proving that longer is better than thicker. I see. Coolers. So the length is more Let's important that than the girth. For all time. Ending the, Sebastian has ended the debate forever. All right. I'm glad he figured that out. Typical. For us. And Sebastian. I'm not saying a damn thing. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Uh, but now, but what about in terms of sound? Okay. Right. The Usually cooler, it's a high squeal. The cooler, uh, <laughs> the cooler <laughs> you said you weren't going to say anything, Josh. <laughs> you lied to me, Josh. <laughs> uh, so to get that added performance yeah. of the H100i GTX in performance mode, you're you're adding 11 decibels of sound over ambient. Okay. Right. Whereas in default mode, you're only adding 1.7. Okay. Right. So that's a pretty high difference yeah. in, in terms of fan speed. But the 80, but the 80 is even louder. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got two fans. They're going the same direction, pushing through twice as much metal. Right. I guess. Yeah. More turbulent yeah. as it goes through more. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, higher, that's higher the trade-off. Speed over that's the, the metal, trade-off yeah. you got to have, right? And so here, here's that shot again that shows the uh, the the double thickness with the two rads or two fans rather, uh, and the single fans on those. So uh, still got good uh, a gold award. Um, they don't break any new ground, as Sebastian says, but they offer solid performance and attractive new styling to help differentiate them from the competition. So if you're looking for a new CPU cooler. Uh, keep that one in mind. Sebastian approves it. And as we all know, Sebastian's approval is all any of us want. That's true. Any of us. Uh, up next, Intel has a new Nook, which is the next unit of computing. This time we're looking at a Core i7 variant, which uh, I will admit going into did not expect much from. It's yeah. Core i7 Broadwell, mm -hmm. which is still a dual-core hyper-threaded part. Core i5 Broadwell, dual core hyper threaded part. Mm -hmm. This has Iris graphics, uh, Iris so, 6100, oh. as opposed to the Core i5 has Intel HD 6000. So, in well, terms Iris of model is, numbering, Iris is better. Iris is 6100 versus 6000, so it's only 100 better. It's only 100 better. Mm -hmm. um, but as it turns out, that's more than 100. Yeah. It's all, the answer is always 100 around here for me. That's true. Um, but the performance of the CPU actually. Yeah, what about the, like the clock rates of the old? So that was just interesting. This uses the Core i7 5557U, which is dual core hyperthreaded, but its base clock is 3.1 gigahertz, and the boost clock is 3.4. That is a lot higher than the last note. That's a lot higher. the uh, The previous one I think was 1.8 gigahertz base and 2.6 boost. Yeah, so it's like something like that. It's a significant, it's a, lot, it's lot a significant improvement in in in, uh, in clock speed. There, it is a double height unit as well uh this one which means it supports the two and a half inch hard drive yep. in there in addition to the m.2 storage uh we've all seen nooks at this point here is uh this is the core i5 broadwell nook this is the core i7 broadwell nook. you get an idea what the size difference is there and here it is with our user contributed 3d printed pc perspective lid which is pretty awesome yeah pretty awesome uh this is this happens to be again the insides of this are going to look very familiar. Uh, you've got your except for the M. Install your memory there. Wireless is built under the motherboard now. 
So you don't have to worry about adding that in. They included with this, though, in terms of storage, an M.2 device that was pretty interesting. is the SM951, which is a Samsung NVMe PCI Express SSD. Yes. The SM951 is available in NVMe and AHCI. Correct. Same model number. Yeah. Two different ways so you of communicating. you got to look for SM951 AHCI or SM951 mm-hmm. NVMe. And actually, to be fair, we haven't seen the NVMe variant for sale anywhere. Nope. We've seen the AHCI on Amazon. NVMe yes. it seems to be, at least currently, an OEM-only part. Mm-hmm. Intel just happened to send this along with the unit to demonstrate that the Nook, with the latest BIOS update, supports NVMe SSDs. Mm-hmm. And it, it, for those that haven't listened to a couple podcasts ago, it did accidentally make it to the storage testbed before this review. Yeah, so we have an idea what it performs at. I mean, yeah. like an Addo run, you're looking at 2.2 gigabytes per second read mm-hmm. and about 1.2 gigabytes per second write speeds mm-hmm. on a tiny little, you know, gumstick-sized SSD yeah. that's yeah. drawing tiny amounts of, of, of power. So very very interesting performance metrics there. I'm not sure you that that a you, you may not you may not is, necessarily need that in a Nook. <laughs> yeah, it's it seems a little bit out of place. It's yeah. so it's so much on the high end of the performance scale yeah. for components in general that sticking it inside this dual core Broadwell small form factor machine mm-hmm. seems a little out of place, but it's still uh, an interesting kind of technology demo that hey, we're Intel's trying to push NVMe forward yeah, in and general in, and any they're going, in any way it's can. Yeah, they're basically saying, look, this little Nook device can boot off of an NVMe device right. and unfortunately Intel didn't have a product that's M.2 and NVMe to stick yeah. in there. Right. If they did, I'm sure that's what would have came I'm with sure it. I'm sure they would have used their own. Yes. <laughs> now, if we look at CPU performance, uh, this is where it gets interesting, right? So this top line is the new Nook we're looking at with a score of 3.88. The bottom, or the line below that, rather, is the other Broadwell Core i5 Nook, and it's like 35% faster. The new Nook with the Core i7 Broadwell is 35% faster uh-huh. than the Core i5 that's it. That's that's a lot of performance difference. Yeah, it is. Right now, keep in mind the TDP of this processor is 28 watts. Okay. The TDP of the Core i5 Nook is 15 watts. Okay. So we're almost doubling the TDP of uh, of the processor, and you're able to get that much. And you're able to get this performance out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's that's good. That you I know, mean, handbrake can... compression shows the same. Like it was it was actually impressive how like Sandra, and handbrake. And Cinebench also like 35 or 36 percent CPU mm-hmm. performance. We you know these are threaded applications uh, that can take advantage of of the the higher clock speed mm-hmm. and all four threads that the processor offers so, up. I mean, doesn't that bring not necessarily all the way to desktop class TDPs and whatnot, but the no. performance is kind of getting much cl- closer to it's a full desktop. It's hard to say, yeah, like because there are no Broadwell desktop parts yet, right? I would say it puts it on the realm of like a lower end Core i3, which yeah. is a which would be a dual core, but a desktop Core i3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A desktop Core i3 has well CPU, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it might be. It might be a little bit. It's going to be a little bit slower still because the TDP is lower. It does eventually throttle a little bit more. You're going to get several hundred more megahertz out of a yeah. out of a desktop part, but it, it, it's it's impressive what you get out of that. Yeah, for the size and everything. Yeah, uh, from a graphic standpoint. This is also faster. If you look at our CloudGate results, which is just 3D Mark running, this is the Iris graphics here running, you know, a score of 8,700 versus the HD 6,000 graphics, which was a score of like 6,900. So you're talking about a, a difference there of like, uh, what was it, 25%. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. And then we did some actual game testing here. Ken did this for us. Like Counter-Strike Go, you can run <clears throat> uh, 1080p, highest in-game settings, 40 frames per second. Instead of 24 frames per second, yeah, it's a nice boost. That's playable. That's something you can do. You know, Grid Two, just over 30 frames per second. Maybe you get away with that. Uh, and then, like League of Legends, you're playing at 51 frames per second instead of 37 frames per second. Yeah. Again, Again these are, these are very playable. mainstream titles. Yeah. Um, it's not going to play Grand Theft Auto Five or The no. Witcher Three. I, th- I think like that, that essentially tells us that we need to stop playing League of Legends. It is the world's most popular game, and it will be till the day I'm dead. I have now decided that will be the case. Perhaps. Uh, which is very <laughs> bad news for us, the world. Yeah. Or bad news for me. I can't really decide. It depends on. I don't really I'm want you. Yeah, we may just kill you to get rid so. of it. <laughs> Please don't. I made that up. Yeah. I was just kidding about that, guys. Uh, but you know, you're talking about 36% frame average frame rate improvement for the mm-hmm. Core i7 Nook versus Core i5. If you're playing mainstream games, you could make this. You can make an argument that that system 
is useful for that. Now, the, the one drawback, of course, we've already talked about is power consumption, and it looks like this. When you're gaming on this system, you're drawing about 51 watts. I know that sounds like sacrilege because, oh, my God, you're drawing 51 watts. Oh, no. For the whole system. Well, that's pretty <laughs> big for something that small. That's like a light bulb in there burning <laughs> in a small, small enclosed space. Yeah, that's, you're right. You know, Which raises the bulb. question of how bloody loud does it get? Oh, at full. yeah. It doesn't uh, get it doesn't get loud. You can hear it. Like when we test it, it's basically like we're sitting here on the podcast. It's sitting right, like right where my there. mouse is, right? Yeah, like, like it's right sitting in front right of here. Us. And you could definitely hear it uh, when we were doing gaming. If you had it behind something, you probably wouldn't hear it. It would be hard. Yeah. And it's a small enough fan that its tone is going to be a little bit higher pitched than normal. So you, yeah. you're going to hear it probably. But it, it wasn't like I didn't turn it on and go, holy crap, what the hell is that? Yeah, you don't. What not we, not like the Bricks Pro. That's what it was. The Bricks yeah, Pro, the, Bricks the Pro. original one. That's the like turning on a hair dryer. The first Bricks Pro we got, was that a Haswell part? I think. Maybe it was an Ivy Bridge. I don't wasn't remember it a which desktop one was. Haswell part or something? I, it, something? I don't remember, but it was like, you can't use that. Yeah. <laughs> this this was fine. Um, but it is, it, it is you know, 15 watts more than the Core i5 Nook. Yeah. Right? Which is significant when you consider that's like forty percent of the total power consumption of that Core i five system. Yeah. Right. So it it is a big jump up. Um. But you know, that's when you're doing, you know, gaming, which is heavily loading the CPU and GPU. Uh. Whereas most of the time you'll be probably in the ten to twelve to thirteen watt range if you're just doing normal everyday bullcrap. Um. I guess that's not the only drawback to it. The, the other drawback to it is price. These things are still not cheap. Yeah. It is a bare bones kit. The in the Nook five i seven R Y H, which I will explain to you as five for the fifth generation Intel Core processor, i seven for the Core i seven variant, uh -huh. R Y H. I don't really know. I don't remember because whatever. H is for um, the hard drive, meaning it can hold oh, it a can two hold and a half inch drive. hard drive, and R Y. <sighs> Whatever they're. I knew this at name. some point, and Alan's going to be mad at me. Canyon. The other Alan is going to be mad at me for not. Yeah, is it Rock Canyon? Eagles Ridge Canyon. I don't. Rock, I, yeah, he's going to be mad at me for not knowing. But um, Rock Paper Scissors Lizard Spock. <laughs> yes, that yeah, something. But that's a five hundred twenty-one dollar bare bone system that comes with your processor and wireless, mm -hmm. and that's it. You and you've got to add memory here and storage and then an operating system but we won't get into the specifics there so you can add eight gigs of memory for like 60 bucks and depending on your storage option you can go as low as like a hundred dollars for a 256 gig m.2 sata ssd sure you can go a 512 gig pcie m.2 ssd for 450 yep right and so that kind of brings you know if you choose the lower end parts there you're looking at you're still looking at 780 dollars with the inclusion of a windows license that's kind of pricey it's pretty pricey. You can build a pretty nice desktop for that. You can build... There's no argument that you can build a a significantly faster... Yeah. You know... Desktop system. Desktop system for $780. Or that you can get a pretty good Ultrabook, you know, that includes much of these same components with a screen and a keyboard, but... Yeah. And not an i7. An but not an i7. Not an i7. Correct. You'd, you'd, have, to, you'd have to get an i5 mm -hmm. uh, machine for that. But, I mean, Jeremy, how much is our budget leaderboard system uh right now um it is sitting at just around 500 bucks i believe yeah, I think, oh no 443 i think the mid-grade one is like that, that, that doesn't, the mid-grade is 885 yeah. mid-grade is 885 those don't include cases and or operating a systems cooler. or a cooler right yeah. so you'd have so, to add some stuff to it oh yeah well what's the on the budget system what's the processor and gpu uh well I, I feel bad about taking the A10 770K away so it's still there okay or the 7700 I uh, no uh, GPU in that one uh, that's right there, it's using it's the there APU. is a sixty dollar one you can throw in there if you really want okay but it does have like a BX100 250 gig SSD so uh, very similar components yep you buy a nice fancy case <laughs> uh, like one of the ones that Sebastian does forty nine that'll bring it up an extra one hundred and fifty two hundred bucks. No, oh, you get no, you get like really a forty nine dollar case if you're gonna build. Well, no, but if you wanted to get like a really spiffy one to make it an HTPC type thing, maybe you, you'd oh, come yeah. close to the price of this, but you'd still be under. Yeah, it, it's it's, I mean, it's easy to see how this is too expensive. The, the benefit you get with the Nook is this super compact. Yeah. 
You have to really thing. want that, though. It has a Visa mount. Like, you can mount it to the back of the hard drive. Like I said, uh, when we talked about the first Nook a while ago, yeah. like when I went to the vet's office and they had one mounted to the back of the monitor they were using as their point of sale system, and so, you know, it's like okay, that makes perfect sense. That's that's what these are built for. Yeah. Um, tight tight quarters. Uh, uh, you know, ease of use. You know. You get kind of like that support from Intel that it's going to work, right? You know, it's a system sold by Intel. They're going to validate it for a while. Yep. Um, so, I, I, you know, and like I said, this is the system I built for my dad when I wanted him to be able to just turn on and do his flight simulator stuff and go. So it's still useful for that. It's just I, they need to be a little bit less expensive in order to be more competitive. But they can't get too much less expensive because then they're going to start cutting into, like, the prices of their Ultrabook platforms. Mm-hmm. Right? So... That's the uh, let me let's, let me give it that name here again. Nook five i seven r y h. That's all I got. <sighs> okay. Um, Sebastian did a review of a fancy case, Jeremy. That's true. Uh, actually, I just posted this up there today. Fractal Design Define S Mid Tower. Look how fancy that is. I love those cases that look like the monolith from Space Odyssey on the front. Like, is that I what that looks like? Oh, well, yeah. Black, just, just black. Just black. Nothing. nothing one light no right buttons, here, I think. No nothing. You know, yeah. I'll like yell at light. it and throw a femur bone at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> dance around it. You know, just kind of like hit it with the bone. So this, even though it's a fairly small case, it's ATX, micro ATX, mini ITX, seven expansion slots, uh, three three and a half inch hard drives, two two and a half inch hard drive slots, uh, nine fan positions, all kinds of good stuff here. Uh, Velcro straps are included for cable management. That's cool. Velcro instead of zip ties. Yeah. Because zip ties, zip ties suck mm-hmm. just in general. Yep. Um, anything that stand out to you about this, uh, Jeremy, other than this fantastic uh, – oh, whoever's hand that is. That's a great hand model. Yeah. yeah that's really <laughs> good there. Well, I was looking at the fan filter, honestly. It's it's not bad. It's and, huge. Uh, just if you scroll down just a little bit, when he shows the empty uh, case – You've just got a ridiculous amount of space to decide where you want to stick fans, where you want to put anything in there. All right, the drive cages are minimalistic. Uh, the PSU sits on the bottom, as we're used to seeing nowadays. But it's just gives you a huge choice of how you want to set up your little fa- your little system in there. I think this is the one he he told us is like we need to send this to somebody that has a lot of water cooling stuff because that's yeah. that's the flexibility it offers, mm-hmm. right? Is you can like jump to the last page and you can see when he's put uh, I think it's the H one ten in there. Uh, and you can just see how wide open the thing is. Yeah. Wow. Where's my so, optical drive? Oh you'll get no optical you got drives. Space for it. No, there's no three and a half. How are you no going to space. Just Duct open tape. the door and then put in your disc the and five close and the door. Or a cage. What you what you do, Josh, is you open your front door uh-huh. and you walk outside in the middle of the road and say, "I'm sorry, Lord, for still using optical media." And then you wait thirty seconds. If nobody hits you, you can go back inside. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's <clears throat> and that, here's a, here's a shot of the back with the with the full system. It, it, it looks really nice. Doesn't it? What is what is the? That uh, is a heck of a stretch for that uh, eight uh, lead. It is. Yeah, the core is not yeah, happy. I'm gonna play violin on that. It looks. That's a little. It tight. is really like that for every case in power supply we use here. That's true. That eight pin. Every case should ship with an extension. Or power supplies should just make them longer. Or power supplies should just make them longer. I don't know if, if yeah. there's some tolerance limits that they have to like the ATI, ATX be. spec. It really should be. Maybe or like, something. But it's it's always like that, right? Like you have all this nice, neat cable engine. It's like I don't want the wires to go. See how he's got this, the fan cable. I don't want it to cross where the, uh, the CPU backplate is. Nope, uh-huh. not this sucker. He's got to go through those hard drive things and up through the backplate area. And yep. then if you got to remove that backplate, you got to disconnect that. Mm-hmm. And that sucks. Yeah. Well, and you can play ding 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 <laughs> on that wire. Please don't. So freaking tight. Please don't. Um, so yeah, here's here's a shot where it's empty, right? You get an idea of. I guess I said it was small at the beginning. I was, it just looked small because of the giant window on the mm-hmm. side of it. Uh, but there's like your two and a half inch hard drive mounting. So are those are the three and a half inch. Those are three and a half. But that's, yeah. I mean, what a neat system to take off this plate, mount the hard drive to it, stick it back on, thumb screw it back in place. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, it looks like it will do two and a half as well. So. What is he doing with the red just in his PC? Nothing wrong with the red. He's using it as a as a, as a demonstration point, Josh. <sighs> it's supposed to be in a NAS. 
That's you're, okay. You're a NAS. Yes. <laughs> I personally like using uh, TLER based like NAS drives, even as singles, to hold data. Yeah, to eat that, Josh. So that's too long. Read everything. No. Oh. Like, I've had drives go bad, and like when you try to image them to do the data recovery, if they have like bad like chunks of bad sectors on them, it takes forever to get through that because you have to wait for every one of them to time out. Right. Uh, <clears throat> that's yeah. nice, but why are we talking about this in a case review? Anyway, I don't know. Well, you started it, <laughs> right? Uh, so, like, one of, part of the part of the advertisement for this case is like, <laughs> is its water cooling capability flexible reservoir mm-hmm. mounting? This is stuff that I really wish I had time to sit down and do. The fixed tube water cooling. I used to. I gave no, no, up. No, no, like not. But then you retired. Not the flexible no tube, but like the acrylic tube. <laughs> that. Well, Did I didn't do bend. that. I, I really didn't have time that, for that. That, I think, looks so cool. Oh, I yeah. just want somebody to build one for me and send it to me so I can say I built it. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me. It's the next week, and... Uh, what? No, I'll, I'll think about it later. Okay. I don't know if I want to say that out loud. Yeah. Uh, extensive if you want cooling some extra support, contest entries, 400. just build Ryan a case and send it to him. <laughs> He'll give you an extra two entries. Got to have a system in it, too, because after the water stuff's all in there, I don't want to have to... You don't want to have to do plumbing. Um, Four, you can put a 420 millimeter rad at the top. Like, so I like this diagram. They show you all the different size radiators you can put in what areas yeah, that of is, the case. That is pretty cool. It's really cool. It's it's a really well done case, um, and I think it would. I think it's good with or without water cooling included into it. Actually, yeah. uh, what is the price of this honk and piece? Oh, really? Yeah, that's not bad. Cheap. Wow, that's okay. For what this is, it's ridiculously cheap. That's that's impressive. And look, it's got a blue LED up here. Uh huh. Look at look at those artistic shots. Hopefully, not a blinding. It's a sunny blue day LED. when Sebastian took that picture. Do you think it's a blinding blue? LED? If only his Every. wife was looking forlornly out the window in the reflection <laughs> in the I window. I wish I wish my husband would talk to me instead of reviewing. <laughs> <computer>. <laughs> he never talks to me like he talks to this case. <laughs> wish he'd use those ice cubes on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to point out that uh, oh, he did Lord. say she was listening in the hip chat to this episode. So. Oh, awesome. Oh, oh, well, so good first impression, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Man, sorry I got you in trouble, Sebastian. <sighs> uh, he did give it an Editor's Choice Award, uh, which is a fancy logo. Yeah. Fancy. It means a little more than just a fancy in logo. In short, it's... highly recommended. Yeah, there you go. Boom, done. Moving on. Um, what's more important than the case that you use, Alan? Well, um, yeah. hmm. What's more important than the case and the monitor and the keyboard and the processor and the GPU? The desk? Close. What's oh. more important? What does your ass sit on? The PebCAC? Your ass does not sit on PebCAC. Keyboard Egg and crates? Keyboard and chair? Chair. Oh. Chair. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't really think that the chair is the most important part of your... Computing experience, but it it's is to interesting. Your butt. It is does hold your butt up. Yeah. So we just posted a video uh, review up of the AK Racing AK six zero one four ergonomic gaming chair, which looks like that. It is a uh, uh, racing seat. Can. Okay. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> uh, it, he's napping on the chair right now. It is it? a it is a chair. Yeah, he's leaning back, relaxing, taking a snooze. It's a it's a office chair modeled after a racing car seat mm-hmm. it's even got like what are those two holes back there for ventilation no those are that for, for your seat, five point, those are for five point seat that's belts. for your right yep. it does not come with the five point seat belt unfortunately no, unfortunately <clears throat> but in an, and also car chairs aren't on wheels like that that's true i don't think it would be unsafe well but, they are on wheels but it comes got five so ken and i were assembling this thing when it showed up and it looks like the, you could just bolt the rails that would mount that seat in a car Probably shouldn't. No, I'm just saying, like, I I think (laughs) it's the same thing. Same frame. Yeah, just put, like, they just recovered it or put their own snazzy little kind of design to it. So this was sent to us uh, from some friends at Mm 4gamergear.com, which is, they don't make this, but they're the U.S. distributor for this particular brand. Um, And I I think it's fairly obvious. You've probably seen multiple of these. Uh, 
They, yeah. They're not and they the all only, look the same. They all look pretty much the same. Yeah. Now, to be fair, in my opinion, pretty much all racing seats and cars That's also true. look the same. So yeah. there's really not a whole lot of variants you can go with here. But it wouldn't surprise me if there's one or two Chinese OEMs putting out a whole bunch of these things and people are rebranding them and mm -hmm. creating things around it, right? So we got sent this blue and white one. There's green and white and black and white and yeah there's there's several other color combinations there's different sh shapes and sizes mm -hmm. shites there's no there's different shapes different of it. uh for you know different body sizes i don't really know what the differences are i didn't really do much research into which different models do different things mm -hmm. but um it has uh adjustable height armrest it's got this uh head pillow it's got like a lumbar support pillow which is the only disappointing part about it because it doesn't stick to the back of the chair or anything yeah, it doesn't stay just there put it where you want just put it, it where you want to lean back. back but if you like you know get up from your chair and it falls down and come back you've got to like readjust it and put it back to where it needs yeah. to be it's all memory foam it also lean back leans back real far look lean back and actually it goes, go, it goes it further actually go that. back further than 90 degrees yeah. further than 180 degrees you mean no well, uh, well, well, that must be a pretty yeah. wide base to be able to lay back that far and not fall over. it is I um, laid in it and Ken laid in it uh, past 90 together 180 together <laughs> and it can't feet, take 400 pounds feet off the ground like my feet off the ground the wheels never like and even when you kind of like kind of push try, yourself yeah back, try to like, push off right, let's see if i push back how sensitive it is. and it wasn't very sensitive like it had yeah pretty good balance like i could totally see me and i think this is what ken does when i'm not here like just recline in it so probably that's why we need more of them yeah we're gonna get a whole bunch more for the office so i can all yeah. just take group naps <laughs> So much for that standing desk. But uh, Yeah, now we've got the lay-down desk. How do I get that going? But all of the foam in the little head pillow and the lumbar support and everywhere in the whole chair is all memory foam. Mm -hmm. It is not is cool. leather, by the way. It is PVC leather. Oh. Which, it's very convincing. Which, which is plastic leather or pleather. It feels good. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. The only problem, I mean, you know, we can't tell you about the long-term lifespan of this chair. We only had it for, what, three weeks or something. So I can't tell you if in four months all the colors are going to wear off or all the stitches pull out. It doesn't feel like that from no, our short time with it. It feels very well built. Yeah. yeah. And I will say that sitting in it, um, you know, do you need the chair to wrap around you when you're sitting in an office chair? Probably not. Uh, it did seem to me, and maybe it was placebo effect of kind of like making me want to sit up more. Um, maybe. And, you know, the adjustable back is actually nice because yeah. you can put it in the position that is right for you, whereas like every other office chair I've ever had is just one angle. Yeah. Like this is just that ratcheting option. handle thing. Like, yeah. you just pull the handle up and you just go where you want and let it go. Yep. Oh, no, I don't know how to mute my... There it goes. Yeah. Uh, so... I, I think where's let me go to the part of the video here where we lean back, if you will. <laughs> lean lean back. way back. Lean back. Here we go. Let's see here. Yeah, there are some. There's a couple. Watch. Of. Look at me go. Oh, oh. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh yeah. it's ergonomically now designed watch, for your watch, pleasure. Watch this part where I lean back under. I go under the table height, like essentially, and like then I, and I, I fear that I'm going to fall over. It does have a rocking capability yeah. as if well. If you have the rocking capability on at the same time that you lean back. That's bad, which I did hear. In total, I did hear. you end up doing like Come more, on, than, self. more than one. Move on in this video. Yeah, Ryan, hurry up and lean back already. Look, here you go. Oh, here there you go. he goes. See, I flipped over. He just didn't. keeps going. You just thought yeah. I flipped over, but I didn't. You know what the hardest part of that was, Josh? Keeping a straight face. Doing the sit-up to get back to <laughs> straight. <laughs> the I was hoping it wasn't be like, you know, keeping Alan away from teabagging while I was in that position. Well, Alan wasn't here that day. I wasn't I here. Was well, this. then, that That's explains the only reason that didn't happen is because I wasn't here. Uh, the, the, the biggest, you know, you can get these, they look interesting. Here's the different color combinations. Um, the, the problem, of course, is that they're expensive. This is a $349 chair. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, you can go to Ikea and get their highest in chair for 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. You can go to Herman Miller and get their lowest cost chair for $800. This well. falls somewhere in the middle there, uh, I believe, in terms of what you get out of it. Is it really a gaming chair? Do you game better when in this chair? Probably no, not. you don't. Uh, you could sit on egg crates and you'd probably be the same. Um, probably not. But this is, I don't know. It looks cool. People ask questions about it when they come in the office. Yeah. I don't know if that's something you want or not, but uh, that's the AK Racing AK6014. Uh, check out that review. Check out the video. I think it was funny. I am a little bit biased, but, you know, we do what we can. <sighs> How long have we going here? 
Christ. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about this, Josh. <laughs> okay. Can we? Please do. So what happened today? Okay. Uh, maybe I went a little crazy. All right. A little. Okay. So I, uh, every once in a while, I, I check around for prices on things because I like to know what's going on and what the industry is doing. And I noticed uh, a lot of the R9-290Xs had a two-game bundle on Newegg. And nobody else had this bundle. T, uh, Tiger Direct, Amazon, M-Wave, nobody. And I thought that, oh, hey, you know, perhaps this is the new AMD bundle that uh, they're going to come out with to, to you know, provide a foil against uh, NVIDIA with their Witcher 3 and Batman Arkham Knight mm-hmm. bundle that has done pretty well. Well, it's obviously, it's, it's Dirt Rally and Grand... Theft Auto 5 in a bundle. So $95 worth of games with a uh, reasonably priced uh, R9 290X from AMD. I immediately assumed that Newegg spilled the beans on a new bundle from AMD. And it was a nice theory, but it didn't turn out to be true. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So uh, the Rally bundle has been around since... April 27th, but nobody had, had has you talked heard of about this? it. Had, had anybody heard of this before today? Did you know that AMD cars were shipping with Dirt Rally? Weren't we surprised when Dirt Rally was announced as a game, period? And that yeah. was just like a week That ago? was like April 27th, I think, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, we haven't heard anything. So, of course, you know, jumping to conclusions, <laughs> as I want to do. Of course. I, I thought, hey, this is the new Never Settle bundle for the high end. Mm-hmm. And then Dirt Rally is going to be for the 280 and below type groups. But AMD came back and said, no, no, that's not really an official bundle. But, hey, buy your cards anyway. So it's interesting because AMD's last response to me was that they were not involved with the GTA 5 bundles. Mm -hmm. That that was between Newegg and the OEM partners and Rockstar Take 2. Um so, as, as I read here, according to AMD, the bundle was solely built by Newegg and the OEMs, which explains why we didn't see similar offers on identical cards at, like, Amazon or NCIX, right? Okay. It is likely, then, that Newegg interfaced with Take-Two Rockstar to get approval for the Grand Theft Auto V inclusion, while the Dirt Rally portion was just a happy coincidence. Also, okay. apparently, a week ago, AMD launched Dirt Rally bundle. Who knew? Um, yeah, nobody knew about that part. So, but. Here, here's the thing that... You know, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, the consumer gets the games. Yeah. If you buy it at Newegg. That's what really matters. I think everybody knows that AMD is going to launch new new video cards very soon. Mm-hmm. Right? And there are still plenty of R9 series graphics cards out there for sale. In stock. They need to be sold. Yep. That's it, This is what happens every time there's a new major kind of GPU launch. Mm-hmm. And, and they're good value for the price. They, they absolutely are. I'm not saying that they're not good cards, but they're like, how can we get things to move a little bit quicker? Yeah. Okay, we'll do Dirt Rally. Well, what about something else? And I, I would find it, it is, it is impossible to believe that MSI, Asus, Sapphire, PowerColor, Gigabyte, HIS, and who else all got together in a room and said, hey, guys. Like almost every rebrander. Well, every reseller, every reseller, a vendor, vendor yeah. would get in a room and partner. go, yeah, yeah, would partner get, would get in a room and say, how can we work together to make sure all of our <laughs> cards sell really well? How about we go to take two and ask about GTA five? That just, that's not going to happen. Right. Now, is it possible that Newegg would go to take two and say, hey, we want to do this? And then go to all the vendors. Yeah. And just say, hey, we know. Like the vendors and Newegg both know that there's a lot of cards that need yep. to sell. Yep. Maybe Newegg says, "Hey, I'll go out and do this effort for you, and uh, you know, get that together and okay. set it up." I think that's believable, but I also don't think it's true. Okay. I think for whatever reason, AMD kind of like I would say AMD probably bartered things and said, "Okay, now you guys handle it." Yeah. Why they why they didn't want to make this an official thing is kind of beyond me. Uh, was it a few weeks ago, Josh? We had issues where. Um, like AMD came out and said that GTA Five was part of the Gaming Evolved program, but then yeah. like Nvidia came out and said, 
that's not really the case. And here's here's a quote from the developer saying that they were never part of that relationship, and then they had to like I don't know. There was this so, weird back and forth about whose game it was associated with, when it really was neither. So right. maybe they didn't want to step on that again. I think I I would say that would be likely, right? And if you do a if you make this global bundle, then that becomes you're stepping on that program yeah. or that that sore spot again. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you say, well, we'll just pick the biggest vendor and we'll just make it an exclusive thing for them, so it'll be just that vendor's deal, not our deal, then it makes it easier to 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 kind of push off that way. But, but we're not gonna you know let that vendor apply that to Nvidia cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, in, I mean, Newegg would have no incentive, right? In theory, if, if in theory, because Nvidia, if Nvidia cards is not are launching a whole bunch with, of new stuff, they have plenty of time to sell. And they've got two games of their own that are pretty. They that's do. true. Yeah, there's I already buy. a two-game bundle going. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, mm -hmm. if you buy in in a 290 or 290x, you can get two pretty good games mm -hmm. for free. So that's good news. I guess that's all I have to say about that. On. I like games. I don't ever have time to play them, but I like games. Right, right. So do what I do. Just add them to your Steam library and never play. Yeah, and or use them for a benchmark. You see them dozens of times a day, but you never actually really play them. <laughs> you sit there and you cry a little bit. As yeah, a little tear every, every run. Ask Sebastian about that. I live life 60 seconds at a time. That's yeah. right. And benchmark runs. <laughs> uh, poor, and poor Ryan actually has to play through 60 seconds of each one. Yeah, that's like, actually worse. Is when he like does frame rating. Playing the same 60 Play seconds through the same time. first 60 Not seconds of a particular level and then stopping. Don't be because such a go on to the next thing. Montez. Every... Every once in a while, I play for like 60 seconds more. Oh, you, like you sneaky, you sneaky guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I, I live out on the edge. Uh, Jeremy, you know anything about the Xeon E7 V3 processors, Haswell EX? These just launched out there. They apparently have like 100 cores in them or something. Is that right? Well, no, not quite, unfortunately. Mm. Although they do have a fair amount. I mean, the, the higher end ones, the... The ones that only run you about seven thousand dollars or so. Uh, it's just you know. How many, how many cores does that one have? Uh, eighteen. Oh, eighteen cores. So <laughs> it's, Is that it's all? not monstrous, but it's not bad. And they got gobs of cash. Uh, it, apart from the lower end model of the E7 uh, eight thousand series, they've all got forty five megs of shared cache, which is pretty said it right bloody impressive. Time, 165 watt TDP. 40, Only for the 2.5 gigahertz one. Okay. 45 megs of cache, 18 cores, 2.5 gigahertz. That's a lot of cache. That's a lot of processing. That's, oh, a, yeah. that's a lot of processor for and what? It's $7, only just $100? over seven grand. So, I mean, yeah. totally affordable. But they, they do sort of scale down. I mean, those are the, those are the high end ones. The basic ones, uh, the 4820 and the 4809, which is like a horrible name for it, yeah. are 10 core and 8 core, 115 watt TDP, and 25 meg of cache. Those are going to be the Xeon prices you're used to a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred dollars. So they only the, go down to eight cores? Yeah, that is the absolute lowest one. Uh, they range between eight to 18. The sweet spot in the middle, where you're probably going to see most people picking them up, you've either got a 14 core or a 12 core with 35 megs of cache, and a much more reasonable 115 watt TDP. I think those are the ones that are going to sell uh, for people. But one of the things that I like about this release is there's not like a dozen 18 processors in it. That's you've true. You've got eight to choose from. It keeps things a little and, bit more simple. Yeah, for the server market, that makes a lot more sense than having this huge pool of chips to choose from because yeah. most people aren't looking at, well, you know, we, we, if, if we shave down one 100 megahertz or so, we can save $30 or we could do this. This gives you a nice reasonable choice of products to go for and the, these they're impressive. I mean, I don't imagine many companies are going to afford to buy them straight off the bat. Uh, the server market's changing completely from what it used to be a couple of years ago. Yeah. But for the guys that really want high-end stuff and are willing to deal with a TDP of 165 watts, you've got an impressive processor to stick in there. Yeah. Josh? Really? What can you tell me quickly? Have you learned your lesson? 
about <laughs> NVIDIA earnings. I guess Jeremy wrote this up. I could just skip through Josh if you want. And I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's up to you. You're the boss. You know, essentially, NVIDIA made money this quarter. Ooh. Oh, all right. And uh, things look pretty good. And it's, you know, a little above expectations. And the bad part is things are going to drop significantly next quarter from what they're seeing. Mm. So slow down in PC markets, slow down in add-in graphics, potentially, uh, you know, competing products from AMD, maybe or maybe not. Closing their iSera uh, I LTE. Yeah, the iSera thing is, yep. is kind of an interesting deal because multiple years ago, many years, well, not many, but Three, maybe, maybe at least four, yeah. uh, they bought up this iSera group out of England, I believe, another UK-based fabulous semiconductor unit. Uh, they, they, they designed and built <clears throat> soft modems yep. for the, uh, the cell phone market. Uh, the premise of their products seemed good, and the promise was good as well. However, NVIDIA, NVIDIA was never able to really attach it to products that were as successful as they were hoping to be. Right, because I remember some time ago the the Tegra Four I, yep. when uh, they released the specifications, a lot of people said, "Hey, this is a really interesting looking product. It could be, you know, a fantastic mid range to low end uh, smartphone processor with the integrated modem. It's going to be really flexible. You can do all kinds of things with it. It's great, and it just took forever to come out, and it never really did." And so, if they could have delivered at that time, they might have been able to save the Isera Group, as well as have somebody actually buy some Tegra parts. Right. And as it is, it didn't quite work out that well. I I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now they're they're closing down operations, and they're they're looking for people to either buy it, or they're just going to close it down in the next year. Uh, they've they've sold a handful of uh, standalone modems to other manufacturers, but that's not keeping the lights on nope. for my Sarah group. Any other thoughts, Jeremy, real quick? No. I, okay. it, they didn't put in the shield, so it's not going to help very much. No. Th no. They've got very little uh, to sell to do it, and I don't think BlackBerry's going to buy it. So, I, Sarah, go bye-bye. Uh, speaking of Shield, NVIDIA did announce this week a uh, a minor update, but one that they talked about at GDC. Uh, yeah, in March, um, they 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 already kind of talked about 1080p streaming capability through their grid streaming service. Well, now they've actually ro are rolling it out, right? So um, they announced an upgrade to grid. 35 of their 50 games on service can now stream at a full 1080p, 60 frames per second including Batman Arkham Origins, Devil May Cry 4, Dirt 3, Complete Edition. Um, now, the requirements are pretty steep. You will need uh, a minimum of 30 megabits per second down and a recommended data rate of 50 megabits in order to do 1080p 60 uh, reliably. Now, they don't mention upstream there or kind of what your latency is, but they they also announced, uh, I think they've opened up, they opened up like one or two new... Uh, server locations, excuse me, in uh, in Europe. Okay. But now there's one in East Coast uh, U.S., West Coast U.S., and Central, probably like Texas. I'm going to guess, I don't know, Seattle, Dallas, and Ashburn. Hmm. The, I'm just going to go off and just guess, like, where do the people put servers in the United States? Pretty much. Um, Are you saying they're, they're, they're sharing space with Apple? Yes, this is exactly what I'm saying. Sure. Every you know other... what, if we buy some of your... <clears throat> space in your Ashburn. Would you put us in your next generation? I got Mac bad news for you, Josh. Apple doesn't own Ashburn. Oh, you sure about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ashburn has been like the entry spot for internet in this country for like twenty-five years, as far as I can tell. Well, don't they have a big server area right around that in North so Carolina? Does Amazon and every other yeah, everybody has it. And every yeah, every, so like, it's... that's where that's where level three is at. Like that's where their central location. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that's cool. So, if you've got a shield uh, portable, or no, you got to have a shield tablet, or 
uh, maybe the new Shield console, you should be able to do that. So uh, that Shield console should be coming out soon. Didn't they should say be. June? I thought they said June. I think it's shipping with the Tegra 4i. Mm, I hope not. That would be bad news yeah. for them. Should use the Tegra. What is it? X1? Yeah, that's right. Tegra X1. Uh, moving on. Jeremy, you had this in there, and I don't know anything about it, but I wanted to ask if it was interesting. Epson is going to make 3D glasses, too? <laughs> yeah. The, no, they're, they've made them. Uh, they're actually selling them for about half price right now. I think you can get them for, uh, I think they were saying about $750 for what would normally be two grand. And so it's glasses, which do overlay, attached to what kind of looks like a cell phone, mm. uh, which has the benefit of taking a lot of the weight off of your face, but does sort of make the interface a wee bit weird because you're actually using that to deal with it. Oh. Now, these aren't for gaming, and strangely enough, they're also not for architects, which is the other place you usually see these. These are for engineers. So the demo that they did, uh, the first one that they pulled out was... Uh, full 3D interface of uh, replacing uh, an air pump in a piece of industrial equipment. And so it shows you exactly where the air pump is, the steps to go through to remove it, and you can rotate it and spin it around and you know use it as a repair person. Hmm. Uh, Register played with it and they're like, yeah, the resolution on it's kind of crap and it's, it's not very pretty. But then for the second one, they pulled out a full model of a Humvee. And essentially they could layer by layer take it apart, show you every single bit that goes into it. You can sort of design with it. And so for that sort of industrial usage, it was a little more impressive because you don't really care if it's coming at you in full 1080p 3D. The neat thing I thought that made sense about this is you can either do it as a full 3D overlay or you can hook it up to a tablet, use the tablet's camera uh, to look at what you're sh seeing, and it'll do AR. So it'll hmm. augmented reality over top of it, which could probably be useful um, for a lot of stuff because you're just sort of, I, what am I looking at? What are all these pieces? Boom, there it is. It's, it's going to be industrial usage. I don't think you're going to see a lot of it sold. And... It's still just weird that Epson is making No, dog makes no sense. They make printers. Yeah, they... they made they, printers? 3D printer? Made yes, I could see that. 3D glasses? I don't know. They made a camera at one time. Yeah. Digital cameras. Polaroid made cameras. They're you know diversifying wow. their portfolio, <laughs> as they very much need to do. All right, let's get into our hardware software picks for this week to finish up the show. Mine is... Uh, it's old. But it's something I just kind of realized. I use, I've used Dropbox forever. Yep. Right? Yep. And I have never really used or seen the benefit in portable applications. Oh, I see where you're going with this. The, the benefit is I just, I just moved to a new laptop, uh, and the biggest hassle of moving to a new system is always like, well, i got to install my new programs and mm -hmm. move my data over, right? Mm -hmm. So Dropbox definitely helps with moving your data over. If you've got stuff in Dropbox that you always want to have, install Dropbox, boom, pick your folders, it downloads it, you're ready to go. Yep. Um, portable applications can do the same thing. Uh -huh. So if you have any programs that can run in a portable environment, something that you could put on a thumbstick and plug in and run without having to install it, mm -hmm. you can just basically put it in a Dropbox folder, and when you go to a new system, you log into Dropbox, it downloads all your stuff, you can run those applications. So I have like a screenshot utility yep. that I use all the time that's a portable application. So you can run Firefox as a portable application. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, what's the other one? I use a text expanding software that that can be run as a portable application, and so you put those into like I put them into my root Dropbox folder, and it's always in the same folder each time, right? And then you just add that into your auto start, you know, yeah. stuff in Windows, and you can do that. Now, I looked up, I tried to find like some people are doing it, and of course there's a like a life hacker story from 2012. That talks about this. So I'm clearly late to the party, but as I was installing stuff on this, my new laptop here, I suddenly went, oh yeah, duh. I could do that thing that I just explained, right? So uh, it's pretty handy if you already have a Dropbox account. Is there a free Dropbox? Like, do you get like two gigs free still yeah. of Dropbox? Yep. So you, yeah, they still do that. You know, you could do that with, I don't know what other, if, if you use any portal applications or Jeremy or Josh, if you use any portal I, applications. I used to all the time, but 
I, kinda, I, know, I know not a whole lot of them do it anymore. It's right. some of those smaller utilities that, that allow you to do that type of stuff. Um, Firefox might do weird VLC things. VLC is like that for sure. Um, Firefox you know. might uh, kind of puke itself if you have it running from a common folder on multiple machines at the same time. Maybe. In other words, if you're running it yeah. on your desktop if I had it my laptop from Dropbox and, that, yeah. and your laptop, it might not play nicely. So at least back in 2012, uh, examples were like Firefox, VLC, Pigeon, Thunderbird, <laughs> uh, Sumatra Pigeon. PDF, FooBar 2000 Music Player. Did I, did I mention that was from 2012? Just, uh -huh. just saying. Uh, so yeah, the, anything that you that can install. And actually, I was surprised. Like my text expanding software, like when you're installing it, it gives you the option of do you want to install this in a portable or just normal installation. I was like, well, why would I do it in a normal if it could just be portable? Like, no, don't crud up my registry with crap. Just put stuff in a folder. Wow. I don't know. Portableapps.com is still a thing. There you go. See? See, I knew what I was doing. They have, like, a front-end menu you can have installed that launches your portable apps. Hmm. Interesting. Might be worth looking into. Is it portable? Is it a portable app? It is app also too? a portable. It wouldn't make sense <laughs> if it wasn't. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> you have up? to install that. <laughs> Jeremy, what do you got? I still find instant translation sexy. I. It is bloody hard to do well. You it's, just want to put a fish in your ear. Well, it would make things a lot easier now, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Skype for 8.1 and Windows 10 beta now does instant translation for English, Spanish, Italian, and Mandarin in voice real time. So I, I, I can see a lot of business uses for it. And yeah. since... Link is now Skype for business. This is going to get embedded very, very quickly once it gets a little bit better. But just being able to do that is pretty neat. The instant messaging capability has up to 50 languages currently. So you can still type at people in different languages and get a lot more usage out of it. But just the idea of phoning up a client in China and talking at them, and it's coming out in understandable Mandarin, and they're talking at you, and it's coming out in understandable English is pretty damn impressive. Yeah, I, I think that's amazing. I, I would love to, to, to see, I would like to, to try that. Mm -hmm. Talk with somebody who uh, is bilingual. You know, I hear there's some Russian ladies that are more than willing to talk to you. <laughs> do they do Italian? I've got some family in Italy. Italian and Mandarin, they just added. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I want to talk Russian to somebody and who various is... various others are coming soon. I want to talk to somebody who is bilingual. I want to talk to somebody who is bilingual. That we can have, like, where they can talk in Spanish or whatever and see how it, well it did. So, do you only before. need it on one side? No. No, you have to do it you on both sides because you talk to them in English, it translates it to Italian. They I just didn't know, I just didn't know if Italian. it did that for you on your end oh. also. And then, like, so uh, only not. one half, it would kind of be easier to use if only one half needed to have it. Right, because then you're not trying to... Maybe, because it does say you can call almost anyone who has Skype, asterisk. Caller needs to have Skype translator preview software installed. Yeah. I mean, it is recommended that the receiver uses a desktop Skype client, but Skype translator is uh, may work on other Skype platforms. That's cool. Huh. Eventually, they'll just build into the main client. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, this is still just a test. So, yeah, there are going to be plenty of acorns in there where hmm. it's not quite translated right. Yeah. Because, like... Like he just said, acorns, and that's clearly Canadian for something. And then when it doesn't translate it right... Come on, like, you do not know that phrase? When it doesn't translate it right, then like it just appears on the other side as the mistranslated thing. Like, so if it's yep. just... Yeah. It could, you never know. Like I said, I want to see how... I, I'm yeah. sure they're doing tests on that. That could be very... It, it's the same... It's the way you describe someone who's got song lyrics completely wrong because they heard it right. not exactly the way it was sung. Or in this case, they heard acorn as egg corn and wondering what no, the hell I, I an heard egg acorn is. No, I you know, kind of like acorn. Waco, my airplane. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Lego, my egg. Don't let your sun go down Kinda. on me. Exactly. <laughs> 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 but see, that one may not wait on the side. Uh, no, there's no good way uh, to translate Josh, this. what do you got? Uh, you know, the one thing that always bothered me about Babelfish, <clears throat> why did the universe outside of Earth call it Babelfish when... The, the Tower of Babel was an Earth legend. How did they get that information to call it the Babel fish? You know, if, if Mr. Adams were, were around, I'd ask him this, but... I don't know what's going on anymore. 
He's he's decomposing. Um, it's true. Yeah. What did you pick, Josh? Uh, you know what? This is just so transparent. Ninety-five dollars worth of freebies for a card that's still pretty good and will be good for a long time at that price. So you know, right now the Sapphire two ninety X with the two games, it's a nice deal for somebody who likes new video cards or at least new to them. It's a new version of that particular card. Hopefully it has some uh, hardware modifications to make it a little nicer. It's still overclocked out of the box, not hugely so, but uh, I imagine with that amount of cooling, you can do some nice things. It's got that little button on there to go from Legacy to UEFI BIOS, if you would like. And again, two games, two really brand new games, and two ones that are pretty good. Beat that. Okay. Okay. Alan? All right, so uh, I'm, like, fixing up my house, you know, and he had some tools that didn't suck. Okay. And uh turns out that this actually, some of the stuff in these tools originated from, like, fans and PCs. You mean, like, motors? Like, brushless DC motors. <laughs> okay. All right, so that started out with, like, <laughs> your PC I'm fan. With you so You wouldn't far. want, like, brushes in the motors for your fans and your case. I hate then the, brushes. The brushes no. would wear out, Yeah. you know, and stuff like that. Okay, but usually those are those fans are not very powerful. They're just you know kind of wimpy. You can stop them with your finger. I don't know. Vantech right? made some pretty powerful fans. Oh, well, I guess. I guess. Anyway, so I was looking for tools and like cordless ones because my old ones were like all about to fall apart and stuff. All right. And uh, these guys, these Milwaukee guys, make this thing called Fuel. And like it's twelve volt DC, you know, just power tools. But then they added this Fuel designator to their lineup. And all of the things in the fuel lineup have brushless DC motors in them. Mm-hmm. So they go, like, easily twice as long on a battery charge. Because I had, like, the prior version mm-hmm. of, like, a drill. And then I switched it over to this one of the same drill model, just with a different motor in it. And it's easily going, like, more than twice as long on the same battery charge. Pretty cool stuff. Is there a downside right. to it, or is it just more expensive? Just more expensive. It's newer. They're not that much more expensive, though. I'm, like, maybe yeah. 10 or 20% more cost than what the previous sam- of the same tool was. Sure. And then the other thing that's pretty cool that I learned recently is I had never had this thing called an impact driver for, like, screws. Oh, yeah. Like, I'd never used one. Yeah. Those are just sweet. Well, They're depending almost, on what you're doing, It's yeah. almost magical. You're trying to, you know, get a screw into, like, two-by-fours or into walls and stuff, and, like, you know, you're trying to with a regular you drill. Use, you don't have to depend on just the torque of turning it. No. Hey, you know, I'm always trying to screw it, it, yeah. two by You can force. actually yeah. drive it in, well, too. Like, like the impact ones are just, they're just magical. It's just. Yeah, impact drills are good. You, you pretty much don't strip screws anymore. No. It I mean, I bought, really a, I bought an impact drill when I was putting stuff in concrete. That's different. Then. That's different. You're talking about, okay, you're talking about a drill, the impact drill pushes the bit down to break up concrete and stuff while no, no, you're no. drilling. This was to put bolts into... Oh, okay. So an impact driver. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. They're pretty sweet. They are. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Anyway, so they have like mm. some other tools and stuff. So if you're the handy kind of uh, computer nerd. Rotary nerd-y. hammer, uh, impact drivers, drills drivers. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Hitachi makes a... Uh, <laughs> no, no, Josh. Attachment for that no. impact driver. <laughs> Yeah, and you can get do. it with the, for the <laughs> sawzall. <laughs> uh, Hitachi makes the drivers for everything, impact or not. That's true. It depends on what you're into. Josh knows all about it. He's got a review coming up next week. Uh, that is going to round up and finish the 349th edition of the PC Perspective Podcast. We'd like to thank everybody for joining us. Again, pcpro.com slash lives, where you can find our show every Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific at pcpro.com slash live. Again, and go go to pcpro.com slash subscribe if you want to sign up for the mailing list. We have those two contests going. Uh, cycle back to the beginning of the show if you've missed it. Uh, later this month, we will have uh, we will have a live event in studio with some friends from Logitech. We have a lot of stuff to give away for that event as well, so we're going to want to pay attention and join up to that mailing list for that as well. And hopefully we're going to do some game streams since there are some cool PC titles out now and or coming out relatively soon. So a lot of cool stuff coming up here on PC Perspective. We'll see you next time, guys. I'm Ryan Schrout. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Hollis. And I'm Alan Malentano. The joke will never get old, Josh. Nope. Never. <laughs>